the uh, circus of the day was in the House of Representatives. But here's the other thing that I found amazing. And this, this is a story that came out yesterday, but it's like the fact that, I, as far as I can tell, nobody's talking about it today. We really all should be talking about it. And that is, you know, Rand Paul, the libertarians. In fact, beyond, beyond Rand Paul, there, if, let me back up a little bit here. About three days ago on Alternet, three or four days ago, oh, it's June 17th. It must have been yesterday or the day before. Uh, Alternet published this piece. Yeah, today's 18th. So it was yesterday. Nine Ways the Right's Iron Randian Experiment Screws Over the Young. It was by Richard S. Cow, R.J. S. Cow. And he ends it. Now, I would have opened it. I would have opened this article with, the, the, I think he buried the lead. Um, this is how I would have opened the article. This is the, but it's the last couple of paragraphs. Dear millennials, we tried to stop them. We failed. We're sorry. You, the millennials, will continue to carry the dubious distinction of being the first generation of Americans to have been assaulted from the cradle to the grave. And the reason why is because the millennials, people born in the 1980s, were the very earliest, youngest of the millennial generation. And, you know, up until, including now, I guess. So, uh, and, and, and he, what he does is he documents, you know, the whole Ayn Rand thing. Ayn Rand, who, he says, uh, Rand reviled the less fortunate, even those who, and, and even those who tried to help them as parasites, while at the same time idolizing sociopathic killers. And then he says, that last statement isn't rhetoric, it's reporting. And then he quotes from Ayn Rand. He has the true innate psychology of a superman, Rand wrote admiringly of child murderer and dismemberer William Edward Hickman. He can never realize and feel other people. Mark Ames points out that this echoes Rand's description of her hero in The Fountainhead. He was born without the ability to consider others. So anyhow, the, the Ayn Rand ideology has infected our country ever since Reagan, and now literally programs from cradle to grave, from, from, from uh, you know, early infant, from infant programs, early education, early nutrition, all the way to Social Security, have been being cut consistently ever since Reagan um, because of Ayn Rand's ideology. And now Rand Paul comes forward and he says, oh, this immigration bill, let's not have a path to citizenship in it. Let's instead just open up lots and lots and lots of worker visas. In other words, let lots, uh, let all the people who want to come into this country, let them in. Give them visas if an employer will hire them. And then the employer has the power to pull their visa and get them thrown out of the country. So they're basically slaves. They're vassals. I mean, they're, they're lives, their livelihood, their ability to stay in the country depends on the goodwill of their employer. You think they're going to ask for a raise or complain about working conditions? Rand Paul, a true Ayn Rand follower. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 866-987-THOM. I mean, after all, his daddy Ron Paul named his son after the sociopath Ayn Rand. And he's following in her footsteps. It's incredible. <laughs>